We are now going to introduce one of the two major concepts in this course, namely the derivative of a function. So let's go back to the kind of motivations we had at the very beginning to introduce a concept of limit. We looked at the problem of finding the tangent line to the graph of a function at a given point. So let's say we have the graph of a function f and we pick a point on the graph. So if its first coordinate is a, because the point is on the graph, the second coordinate is f of a. And if we pick a second point on the graph, of course it's going to have coordinates of the form x f of x. And we look at the uh, sequent line joining these two points. Its slope is f of x minus f of a over x minus a. This sequent line, of course, is not the tangent line to the graph at a f of a. But if we let x approach a, then the corresponding secant line, as x is approaching a, is getting closer and closer to the tangent line. And therefore, that's uh, how we define the slope of the tangent line, as the limit, as x is approaching a, of this difference quotient f of x minus f of a over x minus a. Note that if we let, let h equal x minus a, as x is approaching a, h approaches 0, and we can rephrase the same limit as the limit as h is approaching 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a over h. So this is how we get the slope of the tangent line to the graph of a function at a given point. The second kind of motivation that we have seen at the beginning is the study of motion along a straight line. So we have a solid moving along a straight line. To study its motion, we introduce its position function, s equal f of t, which gives the position of the solid at time t. This position is of course relative to a fixed ori origin on the line, given a fixed unit of length, and a fixed positive direction of the line. In that setting, we have seen that the average velocity over a certain interval of time is the distance covered divided by the time span. So if, for instance, the solid is in this position at time t1 and that position at time t2, then the average velocity is f of t2 minus f of t1 because this is the uh, net change in position, in other words, the distance covered um, over this interval of time divided by the time span which is t2 minus t1. This of course is an average velocity and not an instantaneous velocity. If we wanted to have for instance the instantaneous velocity at time t1 um, we would have to proceed by approximation. In particular this average velocity over the interval of time from t1 to t2 is not necessarily close to what we want for the instantaneous velocity, but as t2 gets closer to t1, in other words, the interval of time gets small, we should expect the average velocity to get closer and closer to what we want for the instantaneous velocity at time t1. And therefore, we define the instantaneous velocity at time t1 as a limit, as t2 approaches t1, of the difference quotient f of t2 minus f of t1 over t2 minus t1. You see that this limit has the same format as what we have seen for the slope of the tangent line. And just like before, we can rewrite this limit as the limit as h is approaching 0 of f of t1 plus h minus f of t1 over h, simply letting t minus t1 equal h. So we have seen that we have the same kind of limit, for instance, for the slope of the tangent line to a graph at a given point, or when we're looking for instantaneous velocity. So we give a name to this type of limit, and we call it the derivative of the function f at x equal a. And this is the limit as x is approaching a of f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a. This can also be written as a limit as h is approaching 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a over h. 
you see that these two expressions really yield the same limit, you only need to write h equal x minus a. f prime of a is the notation we use for this limit, provided that the limit exists. And if this limit does exist, then we say that the function f is differentiable at a, and f prime of a is its derivative at a. Geometrically, we have seen that f prime of a is nothing but the slope of the tangent line to the graph of the function f at the point a f of a. Another possible interpretation is in terms of rate of change. If y is a function of x, then we can think of the quantity y as changing with the quantity x. The average rate of change of y with respect to x over an interval of values for x from a to b would be f of b minus f of a over b minus a, right? The change in y divided by the change in x. If we want an instantaneous rate of change, we're going to have to pass to the limit and we obtain the derivative. In other words, f prime of a is the rate of change of y with respect to x when x equal a. The particular case we have looked at is a case where the variable x is time and the function f as a function of t is the position. Then the rate of change of the position with respect to time is simply velocity and we have seen that instantaneous velocity is obtained as a derivative of the position function. Now let's move to the next video so that we can take a look uh, at the properties of the derivative when we consider it as a function.